bro. Uh, let's move on to topic number three. Gerald McCoy signs with the Carolina Panthers. Now, Bruce Arians came out. He said uh, he's not as disruptive as he used to be. The Bucks gave his number 93 jersey to their new signee, Indomitian Sue. Uh, all, all this stuff came out, and of course he said, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Tampa Bay two times a year. Like, of, of course I am. Like, what kind of player would I be if I wasn't? Baker Mayfield came out and kind of – he didn't talk trash, but he just said, you're either with us or, or you're against us. Yeah, he, but, he he did the road show where he went to Baltimore and he went to Cleveland and, and he finally ended up signing with the Panthers. Um, he and, wanted and, he uh, wanted in the division. He wanted to get back at Tampa Bay. Now, does this help out the Panthers? Like, we, we talked a little bit about his numbers. Uh, he only had 28 tackles, and that's uh, solo and assisted last year. He uh, he only had six tackles for loss, only 21 quarterback hits, uh, six sacks, uh, which was his lowest since. Uh, well, so he's gone down drastically since 2013. I was just the about to department. say he he had when he was when he was young, he he was a monster. Yeah. And ever since then, he's kind of a name and a face and a likable guy, and he smiles and he laughs and he jokes, but he. He just doesn't seem to play hard. the The stigma and the knock on him that that people from the Bucks talk about are he he really 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 liked being an NFL player. He he liked getting paid. He kind of could care less if they won or lost. And and Arians got that feeling. And and Todd Bowles same thing. And they were like, we I'd rather have somebody less talented but wants to win. Yeah. And I think they got somebody more talented. And that guy takes plays off too, but the the, the plays he takes on, he, he he's he, much more disruptive. You know who he reminds you know who Sue reminds me the most of. Now he's not as good as this person was at what they did, but he's like the defensive lineman of Randy Moss. Like Moss took plays off all the time, but he, but he knew he, when to get after it. But when he took one on, nobody in the world could stop him. I, you might be right about that. I mean, he, he's not going to be – Randy Moss, in my opinion, is the second-best wide receiver the world has ever seen, and that's only because the the numbers Jerry Rice put up just blow me away to this day when I go back and look at them in a world in which they didn't throw the football all over the field. Um, but, and Dominican yeah. Sue is one of the smartest guys. Oh, oh he's, like, yeah. Maybe ever. It, his his one-year deals here recently yeah. are, are – Pretty smart financially, right? It's on himself. Well, and, and remember, he's the one that went to uh, to Warren Buffett and right. wanted the information on like, how do I keep this money growing even when I'm done playing? Yeah, you know, he's, and, he's a Nebraska guy. And Warren's yeah. a Nebraska guy, and they got that tie. But but you're right. He he's super smart, and you know, the taking the plays off thing almost doesn't bother me. He's a huge soccer fan, which is one of the reasons he he's so disruptive in football is because. He has great footwork. Yeah. Like the guy played soccer all through high school. Could you imagine? A 300 and he wasn't goalie. Soccer. Like, could you imagine him coming at you, like dribbling the ball? Oh, like, Lord. Oh, God. That's a big man with big feet. Um, But, but no, he's, <laughs> I, I mean, that's a soccer thing. Like, hey, uh, we're going to kick the ball around the corner because we've been running for a while. Let me take a break. Yeah. And then all of a sudden now we're all going to run together. Um, You know, he'd take two, three plays off, hope that they don't come his way. And then, uh, and then he says, "All right, I'm going to get the next two sacks. Boom, done. Tackle for a loss. Bam." Yeah, I mean, he's, he's fantastic. What I, do you think about Gerald McCoy at, at Carolina? Are they better with him? Does I think he they drastically change that defense. They really needed some help. I don't know that this was the right way to go, but they like they brought in some younger guys, and this is more of like a veteran. That will play this year, I mean, it's only a one-year contract, right? Yeah, that's right. So well, yeah, that's all. But all these older guys, that's all they're getting. Yeah, it's all they're it's, getting. In the so end. it's a one-year deal, and he can kind of mentor the younger guys while he's playing. Like basically, he plays, and they sit over there and watch him. And uh, this is how it's supposed to be done, right? But yes, I think he does have a little fire left. Like I think he needed something to motivate him, probably, and. This because at Tampa Bay he had nothing to play for for years. Oh no, and that's absolutely right. You know, it it's difficult to get yourself motivated, and Carolina, you know, that's a borderline playoff team. Uh, they made the playoffs two years ago. They they got a chance to be 
pretty good. Correct. Um, if he's got something to play for, I think he. I think he's still got plenty in the tank. I mean, he's. I, I would. I would see. like to see him. Get he was drafted in 2010, so he's he's just now 30 years old. So he's still well, yeah, got stuff and, left. Him and Sue came in the same draft. Yeah. The same. Yeah. That was the same. That was it. They were. Then they were the two big stars of that draft. Um, Sam Bradford went one, I think, and then those two guys went next. Yep. Um, there's no quarterback on earth I want to see him just destroy more than Jameis Winston. That's that's just. I knew that like we were going to get to that the, point. The only reason, the only reason I'm in on this is because he's real fired up to play the Bucks. Good, good, because there's nobody that deserves get hit in the mouth more than Jameis Winston. Yep. I think I agree with you. That'll make me happy. He's not the guy I would want to bring in to groom my young guys. I'd be like, hey, don't worry. Listen to the coaches while he's on the field. Don't just don't don't worry about him. He's a super nice guy, super likable. I think people love him. He's funny. He seems to be joking and and have a positive attitude, but he doesn't have that. I just never see that killer instinct in him when he's on the field. I just I've just never seen that. Hey, our our buddy Kenneth jumps in. He said, What's up, guys, on YouTube? We appreciate y'all for watching on YouTube. We appreciate yeah, you man. watching on all these apps, by the way. Come on. And so we uh, but, uh we appreciate you commenting in. But yeah, Gerald McCoy, uh yeah, I think I think this gives him a little fire. I think uh the Panthers signing this was kind of revenge. He he knows that division. So of course he's gonna feel more comfortable there. Um and I mean he's played the Panthers twice every year. He knows kind of how that that organization is run. Uh I think it's a good fit. I think this will be good for him. It'll be good for them. And then we'll see what he ends up doing it the next year. It probably is. So Mike Lombardi would call this a um, a progress stopper, though. So, like, Bill, Bill – and, and he gets this from Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells always hated bringing in older veterans, um, whatever, because he said, we got young guys. And and young guys are only going to get better if they need to play and, and put them in high competition situations. And then you bring in this veteran, and yeah, because of his contract and because of who he is, we got to put him on the field. Now these young guys who are making progress every year, every week, getting better, we got to kind of ho hum to the to the veteran. And all of a sudden, these young guys who were doing great start kind of falling away, slipping, not trying hard because they know they've lost their starting spot. They don't have that fight like they had when they were competing against one another. And and there's there's that level. If you say, if you if you look at guys that that have come under the Parcells tree, your Belichick's, Mike Zimmer does this, um, just uh, uh, Sean Payton does this a lot. They they just they steer away from bringing in the veterans if they have young guys at that position that they're trying to groom. They don't need the veteran to groom them. They need that guy to learn to be who he's going to be, you know, playing under them. Yeah. Now, uh, Brian Burns, is that was their first-round draft pick, you know, yep. defensive end out of Florida State. It's not the exact same position. But you bring in somebody like Gerald McCoy, and it's somebody to somewhat mentor the kid, like tell him, "Hey, this is how, this is how we're doing things." And I, I, I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move. Okay, it'll be, it'll be fine. It's, I understand the progress stopper uh, idea, but I don't think that the Panthers were good enough with these younger kids that it warranted not signing this guy that can be a, a reserve, right? Be, being a Browns fan, I'm, I'm glad he didn't sign with Cleveland and I wasn't afraid of him signing in Baltimore. That, that's just how I felt. That makes I sense. could be completely wrong on that. He might wreck the league this year. He might be the old Gerald McCoy from his first couple of years when he was young, had speed, had power, had, had motivation to, to get after it because he needed that big contract. And, and, and I might be proven wrong, but – I, I'm glad he wasn't on Cleveland because Cleveland does have a bunch of young guys that I don't want to see their progress stop. And I also uh, didn't want um, – I, I wasn't afraid of him going to Baltimore. I'm 